here in Melbourne, Nissan's just released the brand new Leaf. They say it's a game changer, not because it's a car, but because it's a battery. In fact, it's a battery on wheels. But you'll not only be able to put charge into this car when it's cheap, or charge from your excess solar, you'll be able to take it out and put it back into your house when your solar's gone to sleep. It really is a game changer. You'll be able to use this car like a big storage battery for home. But more about that later. Let's get out on the road. My good friend David. So it's hello from me and it's... Hello from him. That's right. Oh, you got it. We didn't even didn't re rehearse that. So first impressions. Uh, it drives like an electric car. You know, In I, what I, way? Well, electric cars to me always seem to sit quite flat on the road. Uh, they're, they're, they're responsive. They've got unbelievable amounts of torque. How, ask me how much torque they've got. Uh, I believe they've got a lot of torque, Alan. They've got so much torque, David. And of course, torque is the force that makes wheels turn. And that's all available in electric cars from the moment you put your foot down on the pedal. Now I've just, we're stopping at a set of lights. I'm not touching the pedal and look, we've slowed completely right, yeah. to a stop. Because you have it on the most regenerative braking. Well, we haven't really even had time to familiarize our car. We've literally just jumped in the car. Literally, at the airport, jumped in the car. And so all we've done is we've had a fiddle with the controls. We've looked to see if the infotainment system has digital radio and Apple CarPlay, and it does. Uh, the sound, I think, was quite good. Yep. Was the sound quite good? Uh, the sound was quite good. You, uh, it's, you, you sorry. I speak. I realise you're holding the mic. M microphone, microphone. I realise you're holding the microphone because we've only got the one between us. Uh, but you can you can speak, but you have to tell me when you're speaking. I, I, I will see that. Nice. in, you see. Yes, of course. <laughs> What's the best selling electric car, David? In fact, this Nissan Leaf. When we set off from the airport, did you take notice how much it had? It was 270? No, I think it was uh, uh, 265, 265, I think. 265. So we're now only, I don't know, maybe six or seven kilometres from the airport and we're down to 252 kilometres. So the real world figures, uh, I think, are going to be quite different. And the other thing to note, because this is an electric car and it uh, was eight degrees at the airport, now it's 11 degrees, um, the heating of electric cars is done not by the radiator, because of course, there is no radiator. Mm. So it's done by uh, with an electric element. So that would, every time you turn the lights on, the air conditioning, and we haven't even got the air conditioning going, or the heating, it's using up um, it's using up battery power. I think that highlights the problem that we've got with electric cars generally, and that is, I don't know about you, but every one I've tested, I get range anxiety the second I put my foot outside the front door. Uh, and our range, the second we turned that um, uh, air conditioning on, went down to 216 kilometers. So turn it off, and it's gone back up to 250. So there you go. Do we need it on? Uh, no. Let's preserve no. our let's preserve our our range and our dignity and leave it off. So my well, we might get a little hot under the collar physically, but we won't get hot under the collar with range anxiety. David, it's 11 degrees outside. I don't think we'll be getting hot under the collar. Uh, so uh, to to talk a little bit about the inside of the car, it's actually a lot nicer inside than the previous model. The plastic, except for the top on the doors, feels quite nice. The top of the doors feels quite cheap. Uh, the top of the dash is nice. And there's some nice blue stitching, which all of the electric cars and hybrids seem to favor. The dash has just got a single dial, uh, an analog dial, which uh, I don't know about you, but I find that a bit disappointing. On the other side of the dash is a single LCD screen. It's a very good size. It's not one of those little ones between two dials. No. It takes up it and displays, I think, rather clearly. Well, David, I think anyone born in the last, uh, you know, 30 years, I guess, 
you know that, that they're going that's all they're used to and I realised that we were born in the 1200s, but nonetheless, because we drive lots of cars, we're kind of used to all this high-tech tech. Now, by the way, we've just stopped, and my foot still isn't on the pedal lock. Mm. And it's still not, it's on, not, the, it's not, still a, not on the pedal. It, it's not an adaptive cruise control. It's a regenerative braking that slows you right down to normal. Yeah, though this does have adaptive cruise control, mm. but there doesn't seem to be a cue function. So uh, we've got other little accessories. This uh, seems to have lots of safety gear. We've got uh, a heated steering wheel for uh, frosty days, uh, which we you, you probably get more of those in Melbourne than Sydney, I suggest. Uh, well, the other issue is if you turn it on, how many kilometres do you lose? Should we find out? Well, right. Why not? Let's turn it on. Oh, it didn't go down like the, um, like the air conditioning did. I presume not, but yeah. No. It is um, fairly quiet. How, how do you find the road noise? Around town, I have to say, it is fairly quiet. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm more, I'm more conscious of my range than I am of noise. I spend my whole time, when I tested that Tesla, uh, you know, I took it uh, quite some distance, and I spent my whole time glued to the screen because I was terrified that I'd run out of charge. Yeah, I think there's no question that it's fundamentally an urban car. There's no doubt about that, that it's not made to drive to Melbourne. I had someone once interview me and say, oh, but you can't drive it to Melbourne. And part of the question is, well, so what? There's two things about that. Uh, our friend Matt Campbell did exactly that, drove a Tesla to Melbourne. And the car was telling him how far he could go on each charge, but also where he should charge in order to make it to Melbourne. So the, that was programmed in and the, the sat-nav took in there. But they're also going to put in charges to make that possible so that you'll be able to get, and they'll be fast chargers, so you'll be able to go in uh, with uh, a 100, 100 amp charge and you should be able to charge this up in you know half an hour. And the point about it is we will get used to cars with all the technology that keep us better informed. In the past, as I say, if it went pre pretty low on normal petrol, you knew you could fill it up pretty well any, you know, yeah. anywhere. You wouldn't have to go too far before you got to a petrol station. Now it's just a little bit more managed, but the car will also help you manage that more by giving you pretty good information. Well, some of the information I don't want, but I, I, I suppose apart from that, you know, every car have, has its drawbacks, you know, and electric car is no different. Now, I'm really surprised when we got into this car, we farted about for ages trying to make the bloody thing go. We put it into drive and it wouldn't move anywhere. And the reason was it's got one of those buggery, awful foot-operated parking brakes. And it's the first car I've been in in a long time that didn't have an electric parking brake that releases when you go. So I got into this and I, I'm i going to, you know, try to make it go and it wouldn't go. We had to get someone from Nissan to come over and say it's a foot-operated parking brake. I think that's... I think that's appalling. This is... This is green. This is miso soup. This is... You know, chopsticks and tofu, that's what this is. I think the thing that will push these won't be people's view of climate change, it'll be the fact that governments will start doing, as they've done in London, being far more restrictive of where, particularly in inner city areas, you can drive the car without causing local pollution. That's what London's doing. It has an ultra-low emission zone that says that if you don't meet the high standards, then you pay a huge toll. And so you should. So you should. So my view on that is that, uh, let's say we had that in Sydney, for example, it would have two effects. The inner city would smell as fresh as a daisy. It would be much better for pedestrians and cyclists to get around. And... I also predict that in due course you'll be able to drive electric cars and hybrids in special lanes to encourage people to get into them. So to wrap this up, David, I, I generally don't mind the styling. I think it's cool. I like this little bit of a quarter window here in front of the doors. It's a really strange shape to accommodate the mirror. Uh, there's USBs, 
seat heating, power outlets. I mean, inside it's like a normal car. Well, there you have it. Nissan Leaf. It's the brand new one. I think it's an absolute cracker. Look, I'm not overly in love with the looks, but then I'm not overly in love with the looks of most cars. Have a look at the rating, see what I think. Don't forget, look just there and subscribe. Press the little round thing. No, that. That right there. Press that. Thank you.